the Afrotech Summit in Kenya, and I'm joined by Georgia Popperwell of Global Voices, a global brand in itself. Georgia, welcome to Kenya. What's the conference been like for you? It's been interesting because it's a bit of a departure for me because uh, Global Voices is a citizen media platform, we're a non-profit. Uh, most of the people in that room are, are you know, from business, uh, the business side. So um, for me, it's been a learning experience more than anything. Mm. So you've come all the way from? Trinidad and Tobago. It's a long flight? 31 hours of travel. My goodness, you could have gone to Australia and probably back. Halfway. Uh, probably take a little longer. Yes, 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 yes. Lovely, lovely place, Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. Yes, indeed. And uh, can I ask, is that where you are based because that's where the head office for Global Voices is based? or? No, actually, we, d we are registered in the Netherlands, but we actually don't have a physical office. We are completely virtual. Our uh, core team is scattered around the world, so our, our volunteer contributors and our editors. Uh, the executive director, for instance, who I work very closely with, he's in Washington, D.C., uh, managing editors in Berlin. Yes. The word global voices, it sounds like it's telling people or asking about people. What's it all about? We are a curator, aggregator, and translator of citizen media. That is to say that at, at any given point, our 400 strong community of tra uh, editors, authors, and translators uh, are reading blogs, they're looking at YouTube videos, they're going through images, uh, they're, looking, they're reading through Twitter, and they're trying to extract from that the, the most valuable content, the, the, the most interesting and informative stories, especially stories that, aren't, uh, that don't appear in the mainstream media. Underrepresented voices are, is our main thing, but we also are, are looking at, at current events very often from a citizen point of view, not mm. from the media point of view or the powerful point of view. So you are not for profit, um, you're clearly a hub for communication, information, and news-related information. Yes. Um, how does one get to use your service, if at all, from a user-friendly perspective of using the information, and how does one become a, a member to provide information? All right. Our content is extremely easy to use because it's actually available for free. Um, any Anyone, including commercial outlets, can use our content as long as they attribute it. Um, they can even edit it a little bit. Uh, how you join? Uh, on our website, there's a, a list of all our, our editors. And how you join is, is by contacting the editor relevant to your region or your language. And they will get back to you and explain to you how the system works. We are a, a, a closed community in the sense that, that it, you know, someone just can't kind of appear and just upload something to the site. Um, that's how we ensure quality and credibility, but um, we're actually a, a community that's growing every day. So what's the prime objective of Global Voices? What are you trying to achieve? We're trying to amplify the voices of, of underrepresented people. Um, we're trying to, uh, to correct the deficit in media attention. Um, for Sub-Saharan Africa, that's a particularly important issue because, as you know, the media coverage of Africa tends to be a little skewed in certain directions. We hope through through citizen media, through uh, focusing on the, 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 the words and, and the, the, the content produced by ordinary people living in Africa, we can provide a fuller picture of, of you know what, what the reality is like in, in, in a country in a region like this. Um, we also um, report on press freedom issues, online um, freedom of, pr of expression issues. And um, yeah, so there's a human rights angle. We also have a small media development section that occasionally gives micro grants to allow people who mightn't have the opportunity to, to be online all the time with their homes on computers to learn these skills. Um, so we, we fund projects around the world that help people get online in productive ways. It sounds like you're very much a news agency, but without the news tag, and you're trying to be not for profit. How come? Well, uh, I think most news, news agencies these days are, are practically not for profit themselves. Um, we. We just think it's it's the model that is going to get voices amplified the most. If we were to charge for content, for, for instance, or be really focused on money, we w wouldn't be achieving our mission. I should say as well that we also translate into 20 languages, our own content into 20 languages, and um, we do that just also for reasons of making content more accessible to people who don't speak English. And are you open to collaboration with other media agencies? Absolutely. We, um, we have a number of collaborators. Um, here in Africa, we, um, we actually have a partnership with a, a newspaper in, in Mozambique, a free newspaper called Aver Daji. Uh, we have uh, collaborations with papers in Bangladesh, um, Italy. Um, a number of US papers use our content quite regularly. We've done a project with the BBC. So um, we're, we're always looking for, for ways to 
have people kind of you know expose our content more and more so that the voices that, that we are amplifying get exposed more do you find the media a bit squeaky or quirky or out of sync, especially international media? Because if you've got a voice like Global Voices, which is clearly trying to show um, the other side of the media, the stories that are hardly ever covered, how come is it that the mainstream media, um, the Al Jazeera's, the BBC's, um, the uh, Fox News, have not really embraced or supported your cause? Well, actually, um, uh, to be fair, um, both Al Jazeera and the BBC actually make pretty good use of social media themselves. Al Jazeera, during the Arab uprising, had to really learn how to and, and, and kind of finesse the whole idea of integrating social media into their um, into their, their products. Um, I think, however, um, mainstream media, you know, th there's a limited kind of you know amount of attention that the, the journalists have. There's limited time, um, you know. In a print newspaper, there's a limited number of pages. No, you know, n no media outlet covers everything. I think some do it better than others, but uh, I think a lot of them are learning how to integrate, you know, the voices of ordinary people into their products. What about like um, AFP and Reuters, who are clearly global mm -hmm. uh, ambassadors and leaders of the sale of news of itself? Right. Um, do, are you in talks with them, or have you had any workings with them, or are they embracing your 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 information? Actually, Reuters was one of our very, very first um, underwriters of our content. Back in 2006, they gave us a grant, which she allowed us to expand quite a bit. Um, they w built their Africa site during that period, and we um, Global Voices um, our RSS feeds appear on the Africa site pages. So, if you go to Cameroon, for instance, you'll see our Cameroon stories. So, we we do we have worked with Reuters certainly, um, AFP not as yet. And what about the future? I mean, where, where do you think Global Voices is going to go um, with the same model or would it have to change to accommodate the world that's clearly changing constantly and evolving? Oh, absolutely. We have to evolve. I mean, this is a social media time is, I don't know, it's 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 the speed of light. Um, the, the tools and platforms are changing all the time and we have to basically go where the people are. Uh, we're also focusing more on building the multimedia aspects of the site. Right now we're very text-based, so video, um, you know, we used to have a podcast, we're reviving that right now. Um, also, d d you know, getting into things like, like creating curricula around our, our content, you know, we used a lot in schools, but, you know, we, we're not very an active part of that process. So there's a bunch of, of fronts on which we're working. Of course, we're a small team, so you know, this, this happens incrementally, but certainly, yeah, we have to shift. It's a kind of, you know, evolve or die kind of thing in this, in this sector. Can I just ask, it's important you mentioned about Evolve or Die. Um, you, you, you mentioned about your funding that was supported early in the early days by Reuters. So where are you getting the bulk of your money currently and, uh, and where are you lacking and, and how can people really truly support that? We, um, right now we are funded primarily by, by foundations, um, non-profit foundations. Some of the major ones are, are, are funders, people like the MacArthur Foundation in the US, Ford, um, Omidia, uh, and uh, a few European foundations as well. We also uh, do some commissioned work. We do have a small profit, um, profit making kind of um, some profit making activities. Also, online donations. Uh, you know, a, a big part for, for individuals. You know, come on, you know, give us a few bucks. That yeah. that helps. But um, partnerships as well, um, commissions. We're always on the lookout for those. So. When it comes to media outlets, you know, if, if you want us to do a special project for you, which we've done for, for numerous um, agencies like the uh, UNFPA, for instance, we're doing something with Pulitzer right now, their Center for Crisis Reporting. So partnerships are key. Uh, you know, we, we, we would like to have a revenue stream and, and be less dependent on foundations, but we actually are. The foundations have been pretty good to us right now. And, and finally, is there a risk in the long term, as you're totally dependent on the sort of funding stream that you clearly mentioned, which uh, are dependent on others giving and giving so charitably, um, is there a risk that as you grow larger and you go deeper in terms of the areas that mainstream media can't really touch, um, are you likely to be golfed and swamped or overtaken or even um, um, swallowed up by some of these large organizations who can easily buy you out, if at all? Uh, I'm not sure we'd be certainly not yet pre um, ready for a buyout. Um, I, we we survive by staying lean as well. I mean, not having a physical office, you know, cuts off a whole kind of level of your of your expenditure. Um, fundraising, we are always actively fundraising, and we are um, always looking to diversify the the pool of funders because you know to be dependent on any single large fund is of course very risky. And yes, I think the, the risk we face are the risks that any 
business faces that, that we have to always be on top of things and always make sure that, that we, we you know we run well and and that we have you know enough cash to, to, to kind of pay our bills and whatnot yeah. but certainly we're leaner than most yes well I, I'm a fan of global voice and I think it's doing a great job and I can only encourage others to do and engage with it in some shape or form so many thanks for being with us today thank you thank you, thank you.